Welcome back, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt. Yesterday, Sunday, not yesterday, but Sunday, the Wall Street Journal ran a story that is a headline, AI is, quote, driving the next industrial revolution. Close quote. Wall Street is cashing in. Subhead. Old school stocks in the utilities, energy, and material sectors are outpacing the wider market. And I wanted to ask David Bonson of the Bonson Group if he's adjusting portfolios to address that. And David Bonson joins us this morning. He's the CEO of the Bonson Group from the California. Thanks for getting up early, David. Hope you had a great Memorial Day, did you? I sure did. It was wonderful. One of my favorite holidays, and it's a beautiful morning in New York City. Oh, you're in New York today. Okay. David, I, I was talking about the Wall Street Journal on yesterday, Sunday. AI is driving the next industrial revolution. I never chase a trend. I remember the dot-com bubble. But what are you telling your clients about AI and whether or not they need to be invested in Google or Amazon or Microsoft or NVIDIA or the other ones that play with AI? I'm telling them never to chase a trend and to remember the dot-com era, the two things you just said. Uh, So you have wisdom beyond your years, my friend. Listen, there isn't a way to play AI right now that hasn't already been priced in. I mean, NVIDIA is the one queer company that has made money on AI. We're now in the grifter and scam and fraud phase where a thousand companies are going to put the words AI in their marketing and in their, you know, uh, brand name that have nothing really to do with AI. But um, you can't monetize something that's already trading at 70 times earnings. And so the fact of the matter is that now we get to see who's going to use AI, not create the chips that make AI. That's the whole thing I learned from the Internet. It's not about the companies that are going to supposedly make it. It's about who's going to make money from using it, and and that's going to play out over years, and there's going to be just as many failures as there are success stories. You know, to put a a period on that, I remember Lucent and Cisco were the hot plays when the Internet was making its debut decades ago, and I'm sure they're fine companies, but they're not setting the pace here. So who is going to be using AI, in your view, David, effectively? Well, I think that there is right now so much noise and, and frankly, um, just distorted thinking about what AI even is. You know, if, if we are talking about what most people think of AI as chat GPT, language learning models, and very quick information, access to information, um, I, I think a lot of people are looking at it like it's just a very fast Google or a very fast Wikipedia or something. And ultimately, I think AI is going to end up having more of a utility than just accessing information. Companies will find ways to improve their processes. It will make companies more efficient. But unfortunately, Hugh, with the Internet, um, you would think that something as world-changing and transformative as the Internet would have increased productivity more than it did. And what we ended up doing was basically learning how to get the same amount of things done with a little bit less work. That's not productivity enhancing. And so I think AI is largely going to shift around how certain things get done. Um, But what we're in need of is a larger labor force. And I'm more focused on bodies going to work than I am the specific things they end up having to do at work. Well, let me ask you my question. I'm going to get free investment advice. All I see out there is an increasing demand for energy particularly electricity. I think it's going to go through the roof. AI is very energy intensive. Everything is very energy intensive. And we're not building nuclear plants. So if you think there's going to be a huge increase in the demand for energy, David, maybe you agree or disagree, what do you invest in? Utilities are not exactly exciting stocks. Well, first of all, my job is not to do exciting. It is to protect client capital and to make a return on client capital. And as a... uh, free enterprise lover and one who links those things to transcended truth, my job is to do that out of the faith principles that say humanity is what I care about. We make a return on capital with companies that are producing goods and services that meet the needs of humanity. That doesn't always have to be exciting. So there are utilities that might be good investments, but energy is the story of humanity. It is us converting things that are raw material into activity, into action. That's as exciting as it gets for David Bonson. And so I am a very big fossil fuel investor, very big midstream energy investor, 
We have billions of dollars invested on the fact that we need natural gas to power electricity, that we need crude oil still to keep people from freezing to death. So there's plenty of ways to play energy. Utilities are one of them, but we still like midstream and upstream as well, Hugh. What does midstream mean, David? I don't know what that means. Pipelines. It's the, it's the middle oh. of the energy process. Companies that transport oil out of the ground and natural gas out of the ground to another destination. You know, they're also going to be important for carbon capture. You know, that, that pipe, I, didn't, I learned this like last month, that carbon capture depends upon pipelines. Of course you knew that, didn't you, David? Yes, I did. Yeah, of course. David Bonson from the Bonson Group. If you're going to trust your money to anybody, I do it to David Bonson other than Rich Botkin, but I don't. That's why he's on. David is not conflicted because he's not my guy, but he ought to be yours. Thank you. Don't go anywhere, America. Hour number three straight ahead.